Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back to break some more thrones, and we are continuing to make our way further into Edern, and we are getting, dare I say, very close to what I assume is the final encounter. We're in this last northeasternmost area, and we have several points of interest and puzzles, and then we're thinking we're going to loop back down to this point of interest that we had attempted once or twice previously, but couldn't quite make it work now that our deck is a little bit stronger and may become a little stronger still. So with that in mind, it may make sense to start at the top area and then work our way downward and finish here-ish. Well, obviously, I mean, no matter what, we're going to double back a little bit to get over to the main quest spot here. Maybe this point of interest ends up being the final one or the penultimate encounter before this because it looks like there's sort of a natural gateway here into this spot so either way i think short term we're looking at probably these as our next two points of interest so let's head over in that direction and we actually we've started to accumulate a decent amount of resources here after we spent pretty aggressively previously not that long ago but we might be able to pick up some other things here there i think we were talking about how we've done some big meta upgrades as we pick up more resources here that help us improve our deck more indirectly, but we might want to invest in actual cards in the not-so-distant future just because we have yet to purchase a new card. This looks very grim. Also, that looks kind of dramatic. I feel like there could be a hidden chest around here somewhere. No? Maybe not? Maybe not. Okay, let's carry on in that case across this rickety old bridge. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong in this broken down settlement here with a question mark on it? Coming across a small brook, Meave ordered her soldiers to replenish their water supplies. When they returned, it was with empty water skins and troubled expressions. Uh -oh. Milady, the water tastes of blood. Uh, not like black pudding, mind, but uh, rancid, filthy. Meave had no choice but to march on. She gulped dryly and wondered how to interpret this strange event. Hmm. An omen, perhaps? A warning from the gods? Odd. Okay. So it looks like a normal river, and yet a normal brook, and yet it tastes of blood and... I mean, it's, it's kind of weird, the whole, like, well, I mean, it kind of sort of tastes like blood, but not the kind that you're thinking. It's, it's a little bit different. Like, it, it's the bad kind of blood taste. It, trust me, you don't want it. Like, all right, all right, maybe I, I I was convinced initially you didn't have to provide that additional detail, but either way, not a good sign. She soon learned the truth. Following the brook upstream, the Lyrians arrived at a small pool. Bobbing on its surface were dozens of corpses. Oh, no. A young woman caught Meave's gaze, her long hair spread delicately atop the water, wide open eyes reflecting the sky, a fine nose peppered with freckles, and a gaping wound slashed across her throat. We shall stop here, Yikes. the queen said calmly, and give these souls a proper burial. Okay. Maynard, send scouts. Tell them they are not to return until they ascertain what has happened here. I mean, I would assume this was the doing of the Nilfgaardians, but perhaps not. When the scouts returned a while later, they brought with them a barefooted peasant they'd found hiding in the woods. They claimed he hailed from Horton, a nearby village the village whose inhabitants had been murdered. The black-clad wretches stormed the village, my lady. The devil free gave at the fall. Rounded us right up, took us down to the lake. Whole village, mind. Then chop, chop, and splosh, splosh. It was I alone gave him the slip. So yes, it does appear the Milf Guardians who just murdered an entire village? Why? I mean, it's not that different from what we've seen Milf Guardians do in the past. True, but still. Meave listened to the man's tale, then placed him in the care of her medics and ordered the Lyrians to break camp. She rode at the head of their column, reined at her side, her knuckles gripped white on the reins. Do we know where this Frigeth is stationed? Our riders report he's pitched camp to the east. Then let's pay him a call. All right. Sounds like... We're going to pay a little visit to these Nilf guardians. Teach them a lesson. Like Rosberg. My lady, please. Make 
him pay. That is the plan. Or is this the villager that we were just chatting with? Melka, Bezrad, Kristan, all killed. Souls snuffed out to the very last. Yeah. Could have run for help, I know. But I was afeard. Afeard the black clouds had catch wind of me. Hear me. What now? Whatever will I do? Alone. Left all alone. It's the only villager left. Everyone that he knew. Killed by the Nilf Guardians. Milady buried our valuables for the black clouds came. In the wood, near a big boulder. Got a bit of charcoal? I can stretch the way for you. Oh. In the woods, you say? That looks like, like molder wood? We saw a lot of ruins like this before. Okay. Okay, that's very helpful. Milka, Bezra, now back to what we were doing before. All killed. Souls snuffed out to the very last. What is that? Is that a shrine? Looks kind of different. Hold on, what is this showing up as on our map? A totally different point of interest. Your Majesty, our scouts found a fresh grave not far from the village. It's engraving in Nilfgaardian. Seems an invader was laid to rest there. Judging by the tributes left, it must have been someone important. The Horton Slaughter still has our soldiers livid. And they wish to destroy the grave. Shall we leave them to it? Do the honorable thing and say, don't destroy the grave, even if you want to. It's going to make them mad, but take only the tributes, leave the rest untouched, and get some money. Or take everything of value, destroy the rest. Wow. Okay, so I know we've said this on a few occasions previously. How, obviously, we lost Eik previously when we may have sort of accidentally taken some loots that were supposed to go to the church. But there are other subsequent things that have transpired that we've said to ourselves, this probably would have also made Eik quite mad if we had gone this route or that route, and this definitely stands out as another one of those. I would imagine if you still have Eik at this stage, the only way to keep him and prevent him from disbanding from your group would be to say, no way, no how. Even if it means you're taking a hit to your morality, because this is a, almost exactly the, the same type of thing that that he had gotten mad at us for, was in the previous case, taking goods from the church, or in this case, uh, well, disturbing what is, I mean, a religious in some ways, or at least ceremonial piece of, of well, I mean, a, a grave. A ceremonial grave. So, I mean, that being said, we obviously don't have Eik anymore. So, I don't know to what extent we need to be concerned about having to appease the soldiers and other teammates that we have. Let's see, we recently got Isbel, who we were saying to ourselves when she joined us, she made a very big point about how she did not want to fight anyone directly if she didn't have to and so that's perhaps the that was the most recent thing that we had said okay we want to keep that in mind in case we find ourselves in a similar situation to what we had with Eik, where we could potentially get something for short-term benefit but have the long-term detriment of losing a teammate i don't think this is similar enough to what isbel had said to push her away if we went the cruel route uh i don't think that would be the case it is still very very dishonorable without question but uh, and the other things we're obviously we're about to take on the nilf guardians after this and so to go into that fight with low morale would be unfortunate yes we do have i think at least one if not potentially two shrines remaining so we could at the very least go back from negative to neutral morale here soon after doing this but but it's not that much in the way of coins I and mean, then again we don't get much in the way of coins here you know what we'll be honorable 
It does reduce our morale, yes. However, however, we do have all right, more loot right here. Which was like half of the loot that we would have gotten from being greedy over there. But as I said, yes, sure, there may be a oh, wrong button. There may be a what we suspect to be Nilf Guardian counter to these, which is probably this right here, in which we now have low morale, but we can give it a shot, and then if we do not succeed, we have a shrine here, and we have, I think still, yep, yeah, a shrine there. Be kind of nice to keep that in our back pocket in case we truly find ourselves completely stuck somewhere else, like if we go back to this encounter and find that it's still difficult and we need to get a little bit of an extra advantage from activating a shrine or two. But, worst comes to worst, if we can't get past this encounter, we can use a shrine to get us back to neutral and take this on and hopefully then succeed. Then again, the Nilf Guardians, as of late, the major Nilf Guardian encounters have generally been the, the easiest ones. So, uh, I don't know, I'm cautiously optimistic for that reason. Maybe I will pay for my hubris here, but I think this is the spot. Oh, also, oh, hold on. Hold on, before we forget, yes, there are the Nilf Guardians over there. However, before I forget, because that's easy to remember, there's the, the question mark over there for the point of interest. However, we got that map. Let's take a look. Raven's map, we got this one. This is the one that we just got. And the hidden map, we still haven't found. I think we got this a long time ago. Wow. Okay, we should keep an eye out for that then because we are close to the end of this area this almost looks kind of like it hold on a second is this it <laughs> i think that's it <laughs> okay uh sure i guess we'll take it congratulations you can use this avatar border in the gwent multiplayer game i like it there are some the ones that we've gotten thus far from thronebreaker they look great but they're very over the top. They're very elaborate. And this one, I like how it's it has some style to it, but it's relatively simple. It's not too out there. Okay, so that's one, I'm pretty sure, of the hidden chest that we were just looking at. We can double check, but yeah, there it is. Yep, <laughs> yes indeed. This is one that we just got though. And based on how he said it was in the woods or in the forest, and we can see some what's definitely a tree there, and we saw some similar type of ruins in the forest like this let's oh and conveniently there's a fast travel spot right here let's use it to get back into the forest um what do we we have uh do fast travel spots it looked like there i mean this is, looks like there's a lot of ruins here and here whereas it looked like there's just a little bit of ruins from the image we got on the map like maybe it's just that little piece there i think we go for this one okay so back into the woods we go let's double check cross cross reference our map so yeah this little piece of ruins here and then sort of like a ditch with a what looks to be a dead tree cliff to the left larger tree up top hold on a second that looks really similar. There's a ditch to the right. That's kind of a cliff to the left, yeah. Say the tree, oh. We are on fire with our hidden chests, apparently. <laughs> Maybe it's just coincidence, but oh, and it's Rayla. Okay, cool. All right then. So in that case, quick little pit stop and suddenly we are looking at having several more of those vanities from multiplayer Gwent. So I guess we, we probably fast travel back to exactly where we were previously. Yes, there was a little bit of loot over there on the ground, but I didn't want to accidentally trigger some kind of encounter here in the middle of the village when I think we are probably still looking to take on the Nilf Guardians next. So let's go right back where we were. And let's see just how difficult that Nilf Guardian encounter may or may not be. Again, we're going to try it with low morale. We're going to see if we can handle it. 
hopefully we can, because if we do, then we'll be back to neutral morale afterward, which would be great. Sort of a, a free reset of our morale. Whereas, if we cannot handle it on low morale, we have actually two places where we can increase our morale to increase our probability of success here. Or, I guess another option would be if this is just way too tough and we do still feel like we want to save those shrines, then... We could go and, you know, do some puzzles or do other points of interest. Try going back to this one for our next encounter and use that to reset our morale before we come back here. So all depends on what we feel like is going to be the most difficult of all those encounters. And then whatever that may be, we have the shrine saved up and ready to go to give us a little bit of a boost for when we're taking that on. But let's try it out here. The Lyrians had no trouble finding Vrigov's camp. It was the size of a sprawling town. It's also right next door. Neve stopped her caravan and called for a council. The first to speak was Raynard. Seems our scouts were both right and wrong, Your Grace. They oh. did pinpoint General Frigef, the butcher of Horton. Unfortunately, they underestimated his detachment. It is much larger and better armed than our own. I mean, honestly, how could you not understand how large their fortress slash set of troops were? if they have this huge fortification right here and it is in plain sight. It's, it's not exactly difficult to assess what their military strength is right here. So I do have to call into question our scouts just a little bit here because I could scout this. <laughs> but anyways, let's see. So the question is, because they seem to be pretty heavily fortified, do we avoid the battle altogether because we seem to be outmatched? Or do we say... Nah, take them on. Give it a chance. Give it a try. And I think that is definitely the answer. Whenever we've seen these, these encounters that sort of give us more of a sense of how they're optional, like, oh, hey, you don't need to do this one. It, it's difficult, or it's totally out of the way. It's totally inconsequential. Usually, that's when we get the best rewards. I'm thinking of the one in which we got Isbel, the necromancery healing -y one, as the most recent example. So, Maybe, maybe that's a sign that we'll get something good out of this, so we're totally giving it a shot here. That changes nothing, Neve said, forestalling all protest. If I leave him unpunished, without so much as an attempt, I shall never be able to face my reflection again. We must attack. Raynard bowed and passed the order to the Lyrians. Later that same day, Neve and Vrigov's forces stood face to face on the field of battle. Okay. Let's see, what do those Nilf Guardians have in store for us here? So, crime and punishment. Neve expected General Vrigith's countenance to parallel his villainy. She imagined a face disfigured with scars, yellowed teeth, and a sinister eye patch covering a hollow socket. Instead, she bore witness to a distinguished gentleman in his forties with a meticulously trimmed beard. He appeared to her rather, well, normal. Defeat the Nilfgaardian army or eliminate General Vrigith. Okay, so special rules. Sounds like we can either do the usual just outscore your opponent, or we can take down Vrigith, who, if this is any indication, has 25 power, 5 armor, and it is a shortened battle, so just one round. Okay, let's look into the specifics here. What are we getting ourselves into? Okay, so yep, just one round. I already see a fortress of some variety, so let's take a look. So they have palisades. We can't really do anything to the palisades. There's the castle gate. We might need to break through this. It doesn't move. Every turn on turn start, boost a random ally by two and give it two armor. So the longer this stays, the more difficult it is to take out the other units on the board. Deathwish, destroy all palisades and boost all enemies in hand, deck, and on the battlefield by two. By enemies, that means us. We get boosted by two for everyone on the board and in hand. Okay. Then behind it, we have Rigeth's foot soldier. After an ally is destroyed, move to its position. Oh. So we destroy the castle gate, and if we do, these foot soldiers will end up flooding into the melee row. Otherwise, I mean, they're just five power. They aren't really doing anything else. They do not have a leader ability, it doesn't seem, but they are certainly still playing cards, so it's not like this is just a puzzle purely. 
there's going to be some interaction. So let's see. As we were saying, we have low morale, so everyone is on reduced power, which is potentially going to make this tricky. But what we definitely want to do is we're going to want to try to destroy this castle gate as quickly as possible. So we want damage, but since we can't move it, that means damage from things like the stray slinger is probably going to be significantly less useful. Maybe if we can take it down quickly enough and then get rid of the palisades in the process, the other enemies move into the melee row, suddenly movement becomes feasible. But that might be a little bit of a risk since we're only going to be, even if that is the case, that's only going to be in the latter half, maybe the very end of the match. So I think for that reason, that means we're going to want to try to dump most, if not potentially all, of our slingers. Raynard is very good in some situations. We were looking previously at our last encounter at using Isbel and trying to reset her order ability and use this multiple times to get a huge boost every time we do it. However, we found that you can only use it once, and then I think it, well, it just didn't boost us the subsequent times, even though we reset it two or possibly three, maybe even four times. I think the way that it works is basically, yes, it becomes more powerful every time you take damage. True. However, once you use it, say it gets up to, I think we had it at something like 15 last time. So say the boost on the order is worth 15 points. You use it once, and then when you use it, it drops it back down to zero. So that means that even if you reset the order ability, you have a zero point boost on the order. Maybe if you take damage after you use the order the first time, then it starts to charge back up again. So basically, you know, you set it back down to zero when you use it. And then if you take five more damage, then suddenly her ability, if you were to reset it, would boost for five. But if you don't take additional damage, then resetting her order doesn't do anything for you. And that's what we saw last time. So this combo, despite initially seeming like it was ideal, actually is not. Maybe it can still work, but that's unconfirmed and even then is not automatic by any means. Again, would require that after using the order the first time, we take damage after that and then reset so we can use her order again and that time it has a little more power. But I think we also want to get rid of Nickers because Nickers can get summed out from our deck. Savior. I mean, they are all of our great cards. Yes. However, they work for Rayla, giving her all the charges. But as we were saying, we had hoped that it worked for Isabel. It, for the most part, does not. So, uh, let's get rid of the Slinger. Let's get rid of the Slinger. Gascon. Also not great. We just got rid of all our movement, and we did that because we suspect we won't be able to do much movement. So this is getting highly questionable, this hand. Cavalry is probably a good thing. Now the, the problem becomes that we really don't have anyone to give extra charges slash reset orders on other than Isbel. So maybe we can test that theory. It, it may still be possible to use her order multiple times, but I am not convinced about it. We could, with one more redraw, try to draw into Rayla here, but that's pretty much what we're banking on. Otherwise, it could be, I don't think we've seen a bomber yet. Maybe Illyrian Scytheman. I actually think, well, I mean, she is good. She's very good. The first time round. She doesn't, it's not really a synergy here. So, yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where our deck is just not really built optimally at this stage. As we said previously, we haven't actually crafted any cards ourselves. So, I think we keep her. I think we might just have to settle for this. And, well, except Raynard, in this case, Raynard is... A nine point body you can give charges back to Xavier and I guess yes Isbel and I mean yeah so he may just functionally be a nine point body Xavier may functionally be just a five point body all depends on if Isbel works so uh it's probably not gonna go well it's time you pay 
for your crimes. So I may not read into this one too much, because our hand is kind of completely botched. I mean, completely botched. But we do have damage on the cavalry, which I think we want to start with on the castle gate. Actually, just remind me, what does it deal with? Alistair's Thunder, damage unit by a uh, unit, specifically a unit by 10, which, just double check. Would you even let us hit the castle gate? Because technically, oh no, it is a unit. Okay, I assumed it was an artifact, actually. Well, I guess artifacts don't have power, so yeah, I take it back. What with it being an inanimate object? I assumed that it was an artifact for a second there, but okay, we could use Alistair's Thunder on it if we would like. Does this have... Oh, hold on. Can we turn the castle gate into a bear? It is a boss, or does this say... Oh, it does say restraint, never mind. I was going to say, for a second there, it, it looked like it might have been possible. No, it's not, it's not. So yeah, carry on. Get the damage on there early and often. This happens every turn. Yeah, boost a random unit. So there's Brigid. What's his deal? Every turn on turn start, damage the lowest ally. Damage the lowest ally by 10. And boost the highest ally by 5. What? So he hurts his teammates a lot. And then buffs his teammates a little. Hold on. Damage the lowest would mean you. Boost the highest. Ah, yeah. So right now that means the castle gate is the thing that would get... Oh, I also totally forgot about our leader building. Uh, as I have done many times before. The problem is that means that he's damaging these guys in order to boost the castle gate. So we would love if we could get the castle gate become their weakest unit. Again, it is actually a unit. Because that way he starts damaging it. And that would be perfect. But it has 24 armor, which makes that difficult. This happens every turn? It does happen every turn. Uh, unless if we deliberately boost <laughs> their units. Uh, one way would be to damage this to become the lowest unit. Another way would be to boost these guys to make them the highest unit. And then this becomes the lowest unit. I mean, they're probably going to play other units that become the lowest unit, so that's probably not a uh, a sustainable solution. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just stick with the simple. Continue to market. Double down on the damage. Oh. No, it's boosting you. For whatever reason, I guess since maybe because it's a boss, it doesn't count. Maybe that's why. Okay, this guy's going to start to deal a fair bit of damage. Also, the freaking leader ability lids. Yes. But see, now they have a couple of 7 power units. And I was totally just waiting for them to have two 7 power units to increase the damage on the leader ability. Even if it may still be best... We'll catch them all. ...to just throw all of our damage at this castle gate. Yes. We'll still do this, though. I guess. And fortunately, yeah, that does mean they got rid of their damaging unit. Life is mine now. And play another one, but... Okay. Well... Continue. The is on. Pouring on the damage, and just out of curiosity, Scepter of Storms right now would hit... All these sevens, I mean, might be able to take you out, but we don't exactly know which one it's going to hit. How much damage? Damage ending by two. So I'm hoping, obviously, the longer these stay on the board, the more damage we're going to end up doing to the castle gate, which is why I would very much like for these guys to stay on the board. Oh, that was very kind of you. To split the damage. Very silly of you. Isbel, I mean, as we do take damage, he's going to get stronger. This is true. Have any other uh, strays cavalry? I don't think that 
we do. We could transform one of our Sray's cavalry into a bear, which is not a terrible idea because, of course, they're pretty weakened right now. They're just on two power. They one shot from either of these guys, and they will definitely have charges on their next turn, and one of these is going to go down. Obviously, they don't deal damage if they're a bear. Their unit or their ability goes away, so that's why we wouldn't want to necessarily just rush into it, but. I think we may still need to go this route now, unless Alistair's Thunder. He is enough to get rid of you. And then it would, what, deal five damage to adjacent units, so it would get you down a bit to the point where you're the lowest unit so that we could destroy you with Scepter of Storms? Hold on. I think this is the answer that. That gets Nickers out. Then we go Scepter of Storms. So it takes out their damage. And it just means one more turn, hopefully, of all these guys staying on the board. Obviously, these guys are continuing to get pretty big here. Give all allies and what? Give all allies immune? Whoa! So it just takes all the hits. Looks like we. Uh, it's pretty good timing for us to use that damage on our previous turn. Otherwise, that would not have been possible. Okay. So now, however, we are looking at some of our cards that do not really work all that well at present, and technically by getting rid of the damage, we've made Isabel a little bit weaker. But... We're still trying to prioritize our damage above all else. We just don't have a great way to make all that happen. You can't really do much besides maybe give you two more points. Just pretty bad. Savior... Doesn't have anyone to give charges to, but we could proactively play him. Don't really want to play Isbel earlier than we have to because she's just two power, so she's quite weak. I think Xavier's probably the most disposable here. If I'm being honest. Get it to work. Either that, or again, use a Martyr and Bear to transform one of these guys. But I don't think we want to do that when we still have, hopefully, another safe turn to deal damage to the Castle Gate. I mean, at this point, sure, we may be able to... Ooh. Lots of self-damage. We may be able to take down the gates. That might happen. But we still need to have enough damage after that to get rid of Riga, which, now that he has immunity from the Venendal Elite, I am not sure how feasible that's going to be. So this is... I mean, we're learning, of course, at the very least what may and may not work against this opponent, but we can't give charges to the Scepter of Storms, can we? We actually might be able to do that. This says units on Raynard, and this is an artifact, so in theory that does not work, but out of curiosity, it looks like Xavier can do that. So... I mean, why not? I guess, yeah, it works. It is probably our best option, as we were saying previously. Doesn't work so well on Isbel. If we were to use Scepter of Storms right now, what would it hit? It would... Normally it would hit this. However, I thought that recently we had an encounter in which we tried using Scepter of Storms, and even though the lo lowest unit was... Uh, even though the lowest unit was on the board that we expected that to get hit by Scepter of Storms, it had immunity at the time, and so it didn't get damaged, and something else that was bigger but did not have immunity was the actual target, even though we're not manually targeting something, which is what immunity is supposed to prevent you from doing. Anyways, that's an aside, because actually this does not have immunity because they played this on their most recent turn. But uh, yeah, so this would definitely be the target. I'm nice, we got rid of you, so that uh, the immunity would go away. But... Alas, 
Alas. It may be time for Isbel. It may be time for Isbel. And I think what we do is we proactively play, or we anticipate that Nickers may eat a card, and if he does, he'll get bigger, in which case we're going to want to have Isbel positioned such that we can put her up to the same amount of power as Nickers using the Alchemist. So set a unit's power equal to the unit on his left. That means we want Isbel to the right of Nickers. I've messed that up countless times before. Let's try to get it right this time. Obviously, they have a huge lead on us as well, so the outscoring them potential solution is not looking like that's going to work. And just for context here, we've had all four strays cavalries. We played them immediately. We've had all the time in the world to hit this castle gate, and they still have not been able to break through. We're getting close now because we use a leader ability charge... Ooh. Deal four damage. No, it gets you down to nine. This is still the lowest. Then there's an eight, and then there's several things that would be tied for nine. I'm trying to get it low enough that Scepter of Storms would take it out, but that is not yet the case. So, I think we just... We go, and we use Isbel, because why not? And then we use Raynard, because why not? Right now, let's put him next to another small card. And so if Nickers does not consume something, then this becomes our alternative. It's definitely not as good, but... Discipline shall bring us victory. Yes, yeah, so that does not give Charge to Scepter of Storms. This is still set at zero for our current boost, because again, as we suspected, we need to take more damage before Isabel's ability charges back up. But we can use Xavier's ability, rather than giving charges to Isbel, we'll give them to Scepter of Storms, because that does work. We do have a leader ability charge, which I think, I think we do need to go on the castle gate. I think that is necessary, because then at the end of their next turn, we will deal damage with the Stray's Cavalry to this castle gate, and it should be the lowest card, at which point, finally, Scepter of Storms can hit it, but at that point, it very well, maybe too little too late. We'll have to see. Does this encounter looks like it may be tricky, even if we had a better hand? There's the damage we were looking for. So yes, now that's down to five, which means Scepter Storms can take out the Castle Gate. So, I mean, it may be that after doing that, and these guys start moving, then suddenly everything becomes much easier, but I'm not, not convinced about that yet. So, in that case, take any damage? No. So let's use Scepter Storm. This is the key. It does boost all of our cards, yes, but even then, we still, dare I say, are not very close. We're not very close. So, we don't really want to use Alchemist here. Oh, also, we have significantly fewer cards that are, that are damaged. And the ones that are damaged are not positioned in a great place for us. We actually should have done Bartoram Bear first, and that would have boosted the bear in the process. I guess we would like to transform you into a bear, because that way we can use Alchemist to get Raynard up to your amount of power. Obviously, Raynard is currently our biggest unit. That's why I was saying it's not the best of positioning here, but I think it is still our best option. The Mark did get moved to other targets, but it's not nearly as valuable now that it is no longer on the Castle Gate. So I'm still unconvinced here. I don't know how we get the damage to take out Frigate right now. I think they do still have not only Frigate, but all of these... What have they been? They've been playing. These Slave Drivers. Damage lowest ally by 10, boost the highest ally by 5. You could make a case for rather than targeting the castle or the fortification gate, 
Just go straight for Frigith. Obviously, there was a, a while there where he had immunity, but early on, he did not. I think you can make a case for going after him. And sure, his ability is not going to damage himself. I don't think that would ever apply to himself. I assume that only includes other units. But if you can get him low enough to have Slave Driver be the thing that damages him, then you can have them do all the hard work for you. So that, I think, might be our, our closest answer here. But as of right now, obviously, Isbel doesn't do anything because there was no damage that we had taken there. So that was a zero-point boost, but Scepter of Storms, I mean... Get rid of your armor, also does basically nothing. And the positioning here, as we said, the Alchemist is less than if ideal. Anyone asks, you've not seen me. So, I mean, honestly, it's closer than I would have expected, given how our hand just never really quite worked for the situation. This might require that we customize our deck a bit to get rid of the Slinger, since the movement doesn't really work. Would have loved to have had a Stray's Bomber. Would have loved to have had Rayla. And just even more Stray's Cavalry, even Larry and Scythemen for putting up points, but as I was saying, I think maybe our our best answer is just Arkid Frigga. As this, yes, was certainly not the best of hands, so our probability of success was very low, but even if our hand was better, I am not sure that we could have pulled it off. So, I mean, we could... Let's try restarting. We'll give it a quick second attempt here. But we immediately see the reason why we are saying we uh, we might want to make some deck shifts. Because the Slingers... Uh, the Slingers... See, the thing is, the Slingers are not great. And Nickers can also come out from our deck. So that was also not ideal. Come out, free gift. It's time you pay for your crimes! Okay. Have we salvaged this hand a little bit? We do have Rayla, but now we would actually like to have all those cards that give us more orders so we can use Rayla to get more cards out from our deck to at least put more bodies on the board to give us more points. But as I was saying, I mean, initially, first turn we do not have Vrigith on the board. So I think we save our leader ability for him. But let's, let's use the Stray's Bomber first in that case. And we will take this guy and set it's this row on fire where we're expecting Frigith to go no room in the melee room we're assuming they still play Frigith on this turn they do okay so he's gonna get immunity if we do not act quickly so we does this have restraint it does not notably Notably, it does not. And, oh, hold on. Wait a second. Use Alzer's Thunder. Use, Al use Alzer's Thunder. Five damage to adjacent units means these are going to go down. Frigith will take a little bit of damage from it. I think this is definitely the answer here. It gets Snickers out. Oh, it does get... Mm. Okay, that's unfortunate. Yes, we need to get Brigith low enough that even when they start summoning in more foot soldiers, he's still lower than even them. So, like, amazing if we could still get to the point where he's within Scepter of Storm's range. I mean, once we're there, I think we're basically, we've won it. But, go after you there. We want to make sure we can still have enough time to get a cavalry or two down to mark you. So the fire's going to help, hopefully. But we want other sources of damage to hit Brigith. Okay, so now, yes, let's mark as soon as we can. And we took these Black Infantry Arvalists out last time using Scepter of Storms, which is not quite enough damage right now, but actually, if we did it, Brigith would destroy... Actually, he's going to destroy this Black Infantry Arvalist already at the start of their turn, so we don't even need to do that. Hmm. So I think, yeah, we probably save those charges. I think we probably save those charges. Oh, what the order of operations, though? Order of operations. Though. Life is mine now. Fortunately, you're going after a unit that doesn't matter. Okay. 
So I think we're still looking to put as many marks on Brigith as possible before he gets the immunity. The more damage we can start turning out per turn, the better. Love we could sneak in another leader ability before they get that card down that's gonna give them immunity. Wise choice. But they're gonna load up on this this is the downside of not having destroyed the Black Infantry Arbalist this time, is now suddenly they can take out our units that do the marking, whereas last time we prevented them from doing that. So, that was the case to be made for having gone that route last time round. And it does make me wonder if maybe we ought to have done Scepter Storms to take those guys out after all. But, maybe that was the right move. I mean, this is very, very likely to get destroyed. In fact, is there any way this doesn't get destroyed immediately? Um, I mean, basically, whatever we play on this turn is going to get destroyed unless it's Rayla, who might have enough armor to tank the hit. Yeah. This is going to be a little tricky. A little tricky. It's down you go. Or at least down you will go. There's the immunity. Just as we are, okay, not quite as we are going to use our leader ability to target Rigith, but, hmm, hmm. Does mean we've taken more damage, so Isbel is stronger, but she needs to survive for a turn so that she can actually have time to use this order ability, which may very well not end up happening. So that's, that's a little dangerous. So we... We've definitely done some things better. We may have done some things worse, most notably the timing of Scepter of Storms. So, how many orders are they going to have? You're going to destroy the lowest unit, which I think is still going to be this Black and the Tree Arbalist. Which means you're going to have probably two charges on this guy. Would not be enough to destroy Rayla. So yeah, I think it probably does have to be Rayla. And this would destroy you... ...or you. And make it so that Brigith destroys the other one, but... I, ...again, like, yes, maybe. Maybe. Why does that work? Keeps on... Your allies destroyed me to its position. Why are these getting... Boosted first. The order of operations makes zero sense. Zero sense. If anything, it's supposed to go that abilities are resolved left to right. So, I mean, that isn't really a factor here, but for Rigith, why are you boosting what is not the highest ally? And then damaging what is not, or at least what is no longer the lowest, well, was initially the lowest ally, but is, but is now changed. But that's something you know what I mean. He's not, he's not doing it correctly. He's a lie, <laughs> and he is not low enough to actually get hit by Scepter of Storms, which is a big problem because. Ah, it's not going to happen this time. It's definitely not going to happen this time. I think we did... I mean, we questioned whether Scepter of Storms earlier was the right answer. Then we said, ah, well, probably we missed the right time to do it. And then, rather than saying, all right, maybe it's not perfect, but we'll do it now. I basically doubled down and said, all right, well, if it doesn't destroy the unit that we want to destroy, then let's just not use it. Except uh, now it's probably just getting worse. Now it's probably just getting worse. So, for that reason, for that reason, we probably are going to use Scepter of Storms, and any other card that we play is immediately going to get destroyed. So, none of them really work unless we go Scythe and go Leader Ability, but we'd have to go Leader Ability on either Castle Gate, which we have not been working on, and so we have no way of destroying it. There's zero point in trying to damage it here. Or we go for the Venendal Elite, which, uh, is the only 8 power unit, it is the thing that is, well, actually, yes, yes, we, 
we hit you with our leader ability. And then you should be the lowest unit and get damaged by Frigate. Like I said, he is not doing what the card said he's supposed to be doing. But, uh, in theory... Oh, also, that should have been typed in first. Okay, so, I mean, we're gonna botch it while we're at it, but... What little chance we had, we may have now botched. But, okay, look very closely. Every turn, on turn start, damage the lowest ally by 10. That is the thing that should happen first. Damage the lowest ally by 10. The lowest ally is the Venendal Elite. This should get damaged by 10 immediately. However, that has not been happening. So, we'll see. In theory, that would get rid of this guy, remove all the immunity, which means we could finally target Brigitte. Unfortunately, we no longer have the ability to use our leader ability on him. Oh, we should have gone Scepter of Storms to get rid of this and then use leader ability on Brigitte instead. Darn it. <laughs> Darn! All these close calls that we either done misplays, little misplays. This one was a big misplay. Not doing this earlier, but little misplays, or just the timing has been ever so slightly suboptimal and just hasn't quite matched up. But do you get destroyed because you're supposed to? You do, for what it's worth. So yeah, that Scythe gets immediately destroyed. There's the slave driver. We what we want is to have you be the lowest card so that you get damaged by the Slave Driver. That's what we're trying to do. But we haven't gotten there. And at this point, like I said, we should have Scepter of Storms gotten rid of the Venendal, or at least we should have done it immediately, or at least very early to get rid of the Arbalists so that we could keep our uh, Strays, no, not Slingers, our, um, our Strays Cavalry on the board to deal more damage to Grigith. But after having not done that, Second best option would have been to use this to get rid of the Venendal Elite and save our leader ability to target Frigith, because this is never going to hit Frigith when he's the second highest unit, whereas our leader ability still could have. So that's also the missed opportunity. So we're yes, we're learning, but we're just not it's still still not gonna work. <laughs> it's still not gonna work. If we do all those things correctly, maybe, but even then, it would be close. Um, so, the other thing is that still, no matter what we play, we are going to get that card destroyed. Isbel does have a huge boost, but she's going to die before she gets a chance to use it. So, uh, it doesn't really matter, I'm afraid. So, uh, there is quite literally nothing we can Make do. Make love, not war. Quite literally nothing we can do. Like at this point... Scepter of Storms no longer is of much any use to us. We're just going to get more foot soldiers out from their deck. So uh, we're just going to hope for a miracle and save you because, again, now now they're we're basically just doubling down because we have no choice but to double down because going with what would have been the plan previously just flat out doesn't work anymore. There's no situation in which he becomes the lowest unit from them destroying their own units because they'll destroy a seven, they'll get a seven every time. Which is again why we needed to have the cavalry stay on the board. So yeah, this this killed us. This absolutely killed, killed us when we didn't do it relatively early. Um, I'm not even sure we can use Martyrum on Nickers because Nickers has immunity. And the Alchemist, I don't believe can do anything on himself either. So we can't... You have restraint, right? Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, that would be an easy way around. Would be, well... Yeah. Set a unit's power equal to unit on its left. So, it's not like we can... For a second there, I was like, well, if we're targeting... We're targeting the non-boss, and then targeting the non-boss actually sets the boss to lower power, then we could make it work. But no, we have to target the boss to set the boss to low value. It's not the other way around. So, yeah. Um, it does... does basically nothing. I mean, we can significantly reduce their score, actually, if we do if this. Asks, you've not seen me. But now he's the highest. <laughs> so now he's getting boosted. So uh, that, that doesn't help at all. 
But, uh, I mean, maybe Alchemist on our enemy with a little more planning around that could even be a half-decent option. Oh, now we're just, yeah, we're just not going to be able to use this at all. Now he's getting boosted, as we suspected. We have enough charges to take out our only cardinal unit for Martyrum. I assume we can't put it on Nickers. Um, we can't do it on you. It is completely useless. I meant it. That's the card that we should have used a very, very long time ago. And, uh, well, we got clobbered. So what did we learn? Obviously, it didn't work. Like, that much is obvious. Yes. But what did we learn in terms of how we can succeed in the future? We learned that getting rid of the Black Infantry Arbalists, or whatever their name was, um, so that we can keep our Stray's Cavalry on the board to continue to chip away at Vrigith is imperative. And then we also need to have a way to take out the Venendal Elite so that Vrigith does not keep his immunity, because we need to be able to target him for probably our leader ability. And, I mean, the row being on fire is really the only thing that we did better this time, and that was purely RNG, our hand being a little bit better, at least from that aspect. So with a perfect hand, the row set on fire, with a properly timed uh, Scepter of Storms, with proper targeting for our leader ability, it might be possible, and with uh, and with Stray's Cavalry staying on the board with their targets uh, set for Vrigith. In theory, that is enough damage. Yes. But that's a lot of things that need to go right, and the timing does need to be really precise, especially with the Scepter of Storms. So, obviously, it didn't work this time. Oh, I also went back to the main menu. Um, but, <laughs> but, uh, I think we're going to have to wrap things up here. Otherwise, we're, we're going to be banging our head against the wall a little bit too much on this one encounter. We may try it again next time, or we may, as we said, double back and either do a different encounter to reset our morale, get us back up to neutral, maybe get some other cards, or we might go to a shrine, pray, and get a little bit stronger that way. But ultimately, this is an encounter which feels like we just either really need to get our, our hand perfect and play perfectly timed damaged units and use our uh, Scepter of Storms perfectly, or we just need better cards, to put it bluntly. So I had said it previously, I was hoping that maybe, maybe we could finish all of Edern without ever actually having to craft a card. Totally arbitrary challenge that I just made up for myself, but this might test the limits for that challenge. So we'll just have to see. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.